This is a revision video for the PSYA3 gender option, Outline and Evaluate Biological Explanations for Anorexia Nervosa. Each slide contains a paragraph of a model essay, so essentially you get the full model essay in this video. Um, there is also a memory story video um, so that you can easily recall all 12 paragraphs. So have a look in the description for this one and you'll see a link to the memory story. If you would like the PowerPoint to accompany the video, please tweet me at blonde underscore pretzel to request. Biological explanations for anorexia nervosa, AN, identify both neural disruptions and evolutionary hypotheses as causes for the disease. Neural explanations, neurotransmitters, disturbances in serotonin. Baylor et al. 2007 compared disturbances in the activity of the neurotransmitter serotonin in women recovering from two types of anorexia with healthy controls. They found higher serotonin activity in the women recovering from the binge eating purging type of anorexia nervosa and found the highest levels of serotonin activity in women who showed the most anxiety, suggesting that persistent disruption of serotonin levels may lead to increased anxiety which may trigger anorexia. Neural explanations, disturbances in dopamine receptors in the basal ganglia. K et al. also identified a neural explanation for anorexia. They used a PET scan to compare the brains of women recovering from anorexia with healthy controls. They found that women with anorexia had overactivity of the dopamine receptors in the basal ganglia, which appeared to alter the way people interpreted reward. People with anorexia find it difficult to associate good feelings with the things that most people find pleasurable, for example, food. Evolutionary explanation, the reproductive suppression hypothesis. Serby suggests that adolescent girls' desire to control their weight represents an evolutionary adaptation in which ancestral girls delayed the onset of sexual maturation in response to the probability of poor reproductive success. Serby argues that anorexia is a disordered variant of the adaptive ability of females to alter the timing of reproduction at a time when they feel unable to cope with the biological, emotional and social responsibilities of womanhood. Evolutionary explanation adapted to flea hypothesis. Geisinger proposed an evolutionary adapted to flea hypothesis called the AFHH to explain anorexia. Typical anorexia symptoms of food restriction, hyperactivity and denial of starvation reflect the adaptive mechanisms that once caused migration in response to local famine for our nomadic ancestors. Their usual physiological mechanisms of conserving energy and increasing desire for food was turned off during severe famine, allowing them to increase their chances of survival by migrating to a more favourable environment. Disturbances in serotonin AO2. SSRIs are ineffective in treating anorexia. A problem for this explanation is that SSRIs, which alter levels of available brain serotonin, are ineffective when used with anorexia patients. K et al, however, found that when used with recovering anorexia patients, these drugs were effective in preventing relapse. Malnutrition-related changes in serotonin function may negate the action of SSRIs, which only become effective when weight returns to a more normal level. Disturbances in dopamine, AO2, evidence from castrofornial, a homovanillic acid. Castrofornial et al. provided research support to show that disturbances in dopamine levels are related to anorexia. They found that adolescent girls with anorexia had higher levels of homovanillic acid, a waste product of dopamine, than control groups. Improvement in weight levels was associated with normalisation of homovanillic levels. Disturbances in dopamine, AO2, weight and dopamine are inversely related, Wang. Wang et al. 2001 has shown lower than normal levels of dopamine receptors in the brains of obese individuals. Levels of dopamine appear to be inversely related to body weight, although whether this is a cause or a consequence is not yet clear. Reproductive suppression hypothesis AO2, support from Menarche and amenorrhea. The reproductive suppression hypothesis is supported by the observation that Menarche, the onset of puberty, is delayed in pre-pubertal girls with anorexia. 
Additionally, since amenorrhea, the cessation of periods, which means they stop, is a typical characteristic of anorexia, this means that reproduction is effectively suspended in anorexic females. Adapted to flea hypothesis AO2, treatment implications of the AFHH. Geisinger claims that the AFHH relieves therapists of the need to search for familial reasons for anorexia. A struggle for control between those with anorexia and those who wish them to get better is an often reported characteristic of anorexia. The family obviously want the person to eat and get better, but the anorexic has a strong biological urge to starve and exercise. Awareness of this causal influence can help treatment and encourage parents to be more compassionate towards an anorexic child. Real world application, insurance payouts. An application of research in this area has been its implications for insurance payouts for psychiatric conditions. In the US, for example, treatment for anorexia is restricted under many insurance plans because it is not considered to be biologically based. However, researchers such as Kay et al. create a case for insurance companies to consider anorexia in the same way as other psychiatric conditions such as schizophrenia that are considered to be biologically based. Treatment implications, drug therapies and no guilt. The biological explanations of anorexia offer the promise of a range of treatment possibilities including drug therapies to normalise neurotransmitter levels and even gene replacement therapy, Bullock et al. 2006. An additional advantage of treatments linked to biological explanations is that people then realise they are dealing with a dysfunctional biology, which is treatable, rather than a dysfunctional family, which is often not treatable. It also reduces the guilt generated by the view that it is parents who cause the development of eating disorders in their children. Gender bias in research. Men and boys have anorexia too. Most studies of eating disorders have concentrated on the study of women, but, according to recent statistics, 25% of adults with eating disorders are men. Whether the statistics are reflecting a rise in male eating disorders or just a shift in perception of who has them is unclear. However, this gender bias in research does pose reliability issues indicating that future research should include men and boys with anorexia to ensure reliable results. So a revision activity, um, you can tweet me at blonde underscore pretzel to request the PowerPoint if you like. And if you have the PowerPoint, you could cut it up and make 12 revision cards by putting the picture and a short, and short phrase on one side and the full paragraph on the other. Then put the cards in the correct order for the essay. Watch the memory story video with your revision cards as a prompt. The link for the memory story is in the description beneath this video. You could try creating a mnemonic or acronym as a cue if, if you don't get on with memory stories. And then it'd be really good if you could get someone to test you on the full essay. If you're my students, you've got some directed study. Uh, you've got a timed essay on Tuesday the 24th or Thursday the 26th of May on discuss two biological explanations for anorexia. And you also need to answer the research methodology questions which are coming up.